everyone. Welcome to Angel Coletta's Car Cathedral. This was called the Car Cathedral for two reasons. One, it has a cathedral style ceiling. And second, when I was building this wonderful building, at the very far end, there was two large beams that went across from wall to wall, and one that went from the ground to the ceiling out of wood. When you first looked at it, it looked like it was a cross from a Roman Catholic church. So that was really the start of the name of the Park Cathedral. This is the second floor man cave. It even has a Christmas ornament on the door. You'll see in this room, every day it's Christmas. Darlene and I are huge Christmas fans, and you know what a better way to spend time than celebrating Christmas every minute of the day. The second floor man cave I designed to have Super Bowl parties, family get-togethers. I have meetings up here now because of COVID, so we can physically distance. And uh, you know, it's just a great place to hang out. Of course, we can oversee the you know majority of the garage, which is a great thing to do as well. And I'll show you that now. So here are my sliding glass doors that completely slide open, as well as they close completely. And this gives a whole different perspective of seeing cars from the top down. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're seeing cars from street level. And you overlook, and it gives you a whole different perspective on the cars. As well, it's just a nice view of the car cathedral. You'll see to my left, I actually have a catwalk, which also gives a different perspective of seeing the cars. So follow me as we go for a walk along the catwalk. Again, what a view. I need more lifts because I have more cars coming. I'm actually working on getting a three car lift as well. We've got two high plus one on the floor. And uh, what a view. This has a different perspective from the top because we didn't see that from before. But you'll see this car has aluminum inner wheel fenders. To my knowledge, it's the only one in the world that has this. A gentleman that lived in Burlington found out I had this car. His nickname was Mick. He actually apprenticed in England for the company that made the bodies for AC, that made them for Carol Shelby. He found out I had the car. He wanted to do something for me. I gave him my fiberglass aluminum and wheel fenders, and he hand rolled these in his living room on an English wheel. And then he brought them back to me, and he actually signed one of them. So as far as I know, it's the only one in the world that has a aluminum in the wheel fenders. Usually you don't see that because it's usually covered by carpet. But this car I wanted to keep as much aluminum exposed as possible, and uh, that's what you see there. I collect a lot of different models of cars that I have, uh, even ski electrics, different models from different companies. Of course, a few cars, they don't have like the Eleanor, the F40 Ferrari, some NASCAR cars. I'm an M&M fanatic. As you'll see, M&M dispensers all over the place, the two M&M cars, and back to the Ford GT 40s. Of course, down here, we have uh, Starsky and Hutch's Grand Torino from the show. At the top, we have Shelby Cobra. I also have this deco. When Ford came out with the GT40, when they were doing the road show, they were handing in some of these other car shows. I'd rather be driving the GT40. So I actually have one of these on my BMW. And people used to look at me like, uh, are you crazy? And I said, I can actually put this on my car because I have one and I can actually drive it. A collection of Mattel, Hot Wheels, Dub City, all sorts of different cars. Again, cars that I own, I try and collect different uh, small models, Hot Wheels, etc. And uh, there's a whole collection here along the wall, as well as other prints. Uh, 
another one signed by Carol Shelby. At the top, you'll see these are boards of magazines I've been featured in. Uh, the Toronto uh, Indie, back, what's the date on this? I can't see. Uh, back then, Toronto Luxury Living and Lifestyle, they did a, a feature on my GT40, as well as Inside Track. They actually took it to Mossport and uh, spent some time driving it around the track. A slot machine that I have here uh, was also a charity event where they were raising money in the city of Hamilton. And uh, this is a Soprano style uh, slot machine. And you'll see actual signatures from Pauli, Michael Imperioli. Um, of course, I can't read the other two, but four of the five key actors and stars in that series uh, were, were at the event and signed the slot machine. Unfortunately, Gandolfini was not there, but that's okay. Uh, a couple of things actually back on the wall, you'll see two chrome style um, <clears throat> mini models here. One is a Shelby Cobra 427 SC, and the other is a Shelby GT500. These were only available at SEMA, and are, were limited to a thousand pieces. I was able to get two of each uh, while I was there. Here is actually a small model of the Ford GT90. This was the predecessor to the Ford GT. This was something they were gonna come out with prior to this design. This was an initial design they had to modernize the mid-60s to late-60s for a GT, and that's what it would have looked like. I'm actually glad they didn't build this and went with the more retro style. I used to watch Speed Racer fanatically. It was a great cartoon and two little models of uh, the Mach 5 and Racer X's car. Of course, the Ford GT. This was an interesting limited edition set. This was two knives, um, a pocket knife and a larger knife to celebrate Ford's 100th birthday, and they put the Ford GT on here and there. This is really my main garage, not part of the car cathedral, but it is attached to the house. And I'm obviously in the overflow position. My daily drivers are out. So currently in this garage, I have the 2019 50th anniversary Bullet Mustang. I have a 2012 Boss 302 Laguna Seca Mustang and the 2017 GTR Track Pack Edition and my wife's 2006 Mini Cooper S Convertible of the John Works Package. This is where I store my daily drivers. The last bay is actually a wash bay with a curtain. I can wash cars in here, we can vacuum cars in here and everything's been designed so it's water resistant and waterproof and you can wash your cars. This engine is normally aspirated, 444 horsepower. Uh, it was also a limited production run of the POS 302, and only 2012s were allowed in Canada, and 2012 was the only year that had the two-tone paint scheme. These engines are, are, are all hand built. I mean, there's only four engine builders that build these engines specifically for the GTR. This 2019 50th anniversary bullet is in the typical uh, racing green that was used in the movie. There was also a black model available, but uh, the green was definitely the way to go with green stitching and green Acaro on the seats. Of course, you have the white cue ball on top of the stick shift. This car is 480 horsepower. Uh, it's a lot of fun to drive. It sounds great.
Part of the Car Cathedral is used for a lot of community charity events. I have two main charities that I support. One is the Carpenter Hospice and the other is the Joseph Brandt Hospital, our local hospital. And you'll see here that actually most visitors that come, I ask them for a very, very small donation. It's a donation box for the Carpenter Hospice. I, am, I was on the board for eight years and continue to support them uh, as much as I can, even though I'm no longer on the board, and this is one way. Here you'll see some shots of different events uh, that I was doing for the hospice, including somewhat of a news anchor uh, for a local uh, news TV show at one point. The entrance to the Car Cathedral. This is Car Cathedral. It's bigger than my house, and that's the best way it should be. Uh, this is just my place of peace and serenity, and I have a lot of fun. I love cars, I love speed. Of course, you have the man cave rules up there, which you have to follow if you want to stay in the man cave. Currently, we're actually standing in the work bay. This is a full-blown mechanics work bay. As you can see, we have a full mechanics style lift, cupboards, cabinetry, drawers for the tools. Of course, I have my own washer and dryer, so none of the dirty rags end up in the house. And I've been my wife's washer and dryer, uh, a nice large sink. This is the men's washroom, a little more manly. But what you'll notice about this is the sink is actually foot pedals for hot and cold. This way you don't have to touch anything when your hands are greasy. And I actually learned this from the meat business that we were in for decades. So everything stays nice and clean. Of course, more paraphernalia on the walls. Uh, this was actually signed by Bob Bogeron which was the little cutout of a Shelby Cobra. The track is electric Ford GT. This thing's really quick. It's nice fun to drive around in the driveway. Yeah, nice little table that my grandson uses. Of course, a ton of car stuff. Oil, change the oil, transmission, jack. These are special jacks used to lift the Ford GTs because generally they're too low. You have to raise them up to get the, the arms in from the lift. In the back is actually an original 429 Thunderjet motor that I took out of a 1968 Thunderbird. And at some point in the future, I'm going to find a car that I'm going to put it in. They also have the original C6 automatic transmission that came with the car. Workbench, uh, again, more paraphernalia. A couple of nice models from my friends at Hunter Engineering. We sent that through. Lots of tools. I'm not that mechanically inclined. I do try and tinker. Uh, all the modern stuff, obviously, is so computerized I can't touch. But I have changed the two transmissions on my Cobra and an engine, usually with help. I do a lot of, I used to do a lot of remote control racing. Uh, the Traxxas truck, that's a two horse, two horsepower motor. Uh, Kyosho V1R race car. This has a Nova Rossi 19,000 RPM Italian motor in it. This thing does well over 60 miles an hour. Uh, that was really the start of my my car collecting it was the small stuff and then wasn't good enough for me so I went crazy and started buying the big cars and it's been ever since. As I tell most people, as you can see, I have OCD, obsessive car disorder, and uh, it's one disease I'm glad to have. People call me multicultural because I have different brands from different countries. They've also said I have charisma after the cars and uh, I didn't have COVID, I had car, car COVID.
All right, um, let's talk about the cars. This was the first Ford GT. This is a Canadian spec car, 2006. When I bought the car, it had 3.3 miles on it. Carol Shelby actually signed the center console. There's a whole bunch of uh, CNC machined aluminum additions to this car. The seat inserts, uh, you'll see on the door sills. Where it says four time Le Mans champion for GT, the year, and the last four digits of my car number. This car has 28,000 miles on it now. It is driven, it's been on rallies, it has been to the track. And uh, love driving it. I will show you the Indian Bay in this one. Uh, here's the engine bay. Did a little bit of work on this. Uh, the GT guys out of Michigan did the dual cold air intake, throttle body, a tune. Uh, I have the Bob Ida exhaust on this car. CNC machined cross members, a fire suppression system. This car is putting well over 700 horsepower at the wheels. Also, you'll see in this car a lot of signatures. You'll see Camilo Pardo, who was a designer of this car. You'll see Gary Patterson, the current president of Shelby. John Luft, the past president. Lee Holman from Holman Moody. GT Cindy, who was in charge of inventory control for the entire production. Bill Schaefer, my engine builder. Of course, the famous GT Joey, Joey Lemongelli. And Marcy Cipriani, who runs the Ford SVT uh, website. As well, Steve Celine, who built the car for Ford, has also signed this car. Recreation of car 1075. This is the car that won, won Le Mans two years in a row, 1968-1969. Full five-point harnesses. It's right-hand drive, right-hand shift, just like it was in the 60s when they raced Le Mans. It has the rear clamshell. And I'm running a 396 motor, 351 stroke to 396 motor with original 48 ID Webers, the bundle of snakes, and a Recaro 5 speed transaxle. This is the second 2006 Canadian Ford GT I purchased. This car only had 24 and a half miles on when I purchased the car. It has 29 miles on it today. And uh, bought this car as an investment. Also, the fact that it's a black with a silver stripe, similar to car number two that came in first in 1966. Putting Ford had a one, two, three in Le Mans. And uh, this car has never been plated. And the five miles that's been on this car have all been done in my driveway simply to keep everything lubricated and functioning. Twice a year I take it out, start it up, run it around, and then bring it back. This is a, another neat piece of art. This was actually uh, drawn by Camila Pardo, the designer of the Ford GT, while I was wearing this shirt at a dinner uh, for the 10th anniversary of the Ford GT in 2015. And uh, was wearing it, and he actually drove it. Uh, he actually drove it. I wish he drove it. Uh, he actually drew it um, while I was wearing it. So another neat little piece of uh, history. Another one of one. You'll see a little tire stopper here, uh, signed by Camilo from 
uh, as well, the designer. This is an actual Fender electric guitar uh, that was custom made for me. As you can see, it, it's a GT40 car number six to match my car number six car. And it's, it's a limited edition and it actually has a serial number, number six to match. Of course, we have the official Ford racing suit. Uh, if you bought a 2017 Ford GT, a, a newer version, you had the opportunity to buy a custom made uh, Ford racing suit, just like the Ford racing car drivers wore during uh, Le Mans. So I got my own. You'll see that it has my name on it. It both, has both the Canadian and Italian flag, as I'm supporting both Canada and Italy. Uh, custom carbon fiber helmet, also with my name on it, gloves, shoes. I actually wear this. I am doing some track days, and uh, I actually wear the suit at the track. Again, also with my name on it uh, for, the, for the track. Uh, that's the car cover, and that little piece of luggage is the only luggage you can get into the new Ford GT. That's how small it is, but it's very, very hot back there. Uh, I guess if you wanted to bake a lasagna on your road trip, by the time you got there, it'd be cooked. I have the original of the floor layout at uh, Celine when they built the four GTs in 2004 to 2006. And you'll see the full production flow when you actually look closer, you'll see the little cars, but they're actually shaped like the four GT. This was actually a custom made bag that a friend of mine made for my 2017 Ford GT. Uh, very nicely done, it matches the car. So for the 50th anniversary, uh, we had a celebration and they had these posters made of the GT40 uh, presented by the Automotive Hall of Fame, August 8th to 10th, 2013 in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, this poster actually I had signed by Bill Ford, Henry Ford III, and Edsel Ford. Great piece of uh, history to have and pass on. This is my very first Ferrari. My father kept asking me, why do you have all these Fords and, and no Italian horses in the barn? So he was kind enough and, and he bought me this Ferrari. This is the uh, first 2012 458 Spider uh, that came to Canada. I did the typical very Classic red on tan, Daytona seats with the red inserts, some carbon fiber product uh, throughout. This car is almost 30,000 kilometers on it. My plan is to keep this car in the family and pass it down from generation to generation. And uh, my first son should be the first one to get this. Nice car, great car, handles amazingly well, sounds fantastic. Whole bunch of carbon fiber parts. Carbon fiber engine bay. Obviously with a spider, you actually do not get the window to see the engine, but because you need, because you need space to store the hardtop convertible. This is a really nice piece. When I did the video for Ford, called Ford Fanatic on YouTube, Henry Ford III sent this to me, to Angelo, thank you, Henry Ford III. Uh, very nice of him to do that. Of course, some more Ford GT stuff in there. This is, some, this is a carbon fiber piece uh, that goes on an F1 car. This was actually signed by Jensen Button, Patrick Freiser, Kevin Freiser, and Mike Gaschioni, and uh, just another piece of uh, nostalgia to have in the car cathedral. Of course, you see small models, M&M guy, of course, and uh, best in class at the Ford Stampede last year. This is a custom made table. Uh, you'll see the Italian flag. This actually matches two of my cars. I had it custom made for that reason. This is the very first 2015 
458 Speciale that came to Canada. Again, this was all custom ordered by me. And I followed the Italian heritage theme that I came up with. And you'll see the green white flag on the entire top of the car. You'll see mats. This is basically the race version road going car of the 458. Also full carbon engine bay. What's really unique about this car when it's running and you actually rev the car, this carbon fiber actually expands. So I actually call this the heartbeat of Italy as I as I rev it. Which we can do. Black wheels, titanium lug nuts, and custom painted Italian livery brake calipers. When Ferrari replaced the 458 with the 488, their version of the 488 Special Speciality was the 48 Pista, and that's what this car is here. So I designed this car to basically be a newer, younger sister to the 458, again following the Italian heritage tricolor livery. This has way more tricolor Italian livery in it. You'll see on the seats, the center stripe is green, white, and red. You'll see the green, white, and red following through on the steering wheel, as well as green, white, and red stitching along the edges of the seats. The other thing you'll notice on this car, I believe it's the first time Ferrari's done this, on the headrest, they usually do the horse. And this car I ordered with the shield, also with the green, white, and red on top. Whereas the 458 was a V8 normally aspirated, the last one normally aspirated cars in the V8 category, the 488 is a twin turbo V8. Again, full carbon fiber engine bay. I did the same thing on this car, the titanium lug nuts, as well as the tricolor Italian flag brake calipers in green, white, and red with full carbon fiber wheels. Hellcat Red Eye 797 horse. Very, very quick car. Good for amazing action for doing burnouts. Big car. The blue, this is a Superformance Shelby Cobra 427 SC. This is my very first true sports car that I bought. That really was the bug that started this. This, this car was bought brand new, still the original paint, 36,000 miles, running a 427 cubic inch stroker, uh, as well as a Tremec TKO 600 transmission. This, now, this car is brand new. This is the 2020 GT500 track pack. I just picked this up two days ago. Still got all the plastic in it. Car has not even been washed by the dealer. All they did was the PPI for the mechanics. This car has full carbon fiber wheels, 
carbon fiber spoiler, no rear, no rear seat, also a limited production run. Two pride and joys on top of all the other pride and joys I have. This is an all aluminum Shelby Cobra. This is number two of only 12 American made cars. Most of the cars came out of England or Poland. This car was fully made in Illinois. All aluminum body, all hand rolled. The engine was made by the late Bill Carson from Southern Automotive. It's an original 427 side roller with an original NASCAR big spline four speed top motor. It also has the FIA racing fuel tank, as well as front and rear brake cooling ducts. I'm the only guy to ever tried this car. It's got just over 200 miles. It is a beast of a car. A lot of original 60s parts. The car was actually done in 1997 when Carroll Shelby started again after he took a hiatus for about 10 years in the late 60s. Amazing, amazing, amazing piece of car. You'll see later we have the aluminum inner wheel fenders. It's the only one in the world that I know of that has aluminum inner wheel fenders made by Nick, a gentleman here in Burlington. Now that is all aluminum, so people can actually see some of the weld lines, some of the body marks from the person actually hand hammering the car. The aluminum is very, very thin and also absorbs the oils from your fingers. This is a 2005 Spiker C8. This is only the third one in Canada. Silver with blue. Spiker from the Netherlands was in the aeronautics business. And as you look and see parts of this car, you'll see a lot of aeronautic influence. You'll see propeller style wheels, propeller style steering wheel. A lot of machined aluminum pieces, no plastic. This has the Scissor style doors. What's really unique about this car, this car belonged to Jennifer Lopez. And uh, a buddy of mine in New York had bought it from Jennifer. He called me last fall and offered me the car. I bought it, so I'm the third owner. But the fact that Jennifer Lopez and uh, then Mark Anthony, her then husband, sat in this car is simply amazing. Uh, it's an Audi 4.2, 400 horsepower motor, and uh, the car is actually very, very quick. But uh, I'm hoping to get Jennifer Lopez to come back up here, see the car cathedral, and actually sign the car for me. front clamshell. And you'll see a small toolbox underneath here. Don't ask me how to get to it. Hope I never have to use it. It's a mid-engine car. With a little bit of luggage space. And I've tried it, it actually doesn't get too warm in here, which I was kind of surprised. This is uh, my wife's 2019 Ferrari Portofino. We replaced her 2017 California T. She loves driving this car. Great grand touring car. I am missing a few cars, unfortunately, from the Car Cathedral. I have a 2017 488 Challenge race car, uh, which I'm actually tracking. I have a coach and a pit crew. I have the very first 50th anniversary 289 Shelby Cobra, and that is in Irvine, California, currently. That car also has a 289 stroke to 347 motor, uh, all original, built by Bill Carson with a original four-speed top loader, also from 1962. 
It will be coming up here shortly. And the last car that's not here is I have a 1939 right-hand drive Wraith Rolls-Royce limousine. Actually, I don't drive that car. That was the first car I bought thinking I was going to go that way in my collection. It was way, way too slow for me, so that didn't last long. And then I switched to more high-performance muscle cars. I have more cars coming, but we'll save that for uh, YouTube uh, number two. Uh, a great big thank you to the Peterson Automotive Museum for uh, letting me do this. Very kind of you to reach out and ask me. I feel honored and privileged that you considered my collection to be uh, worthy enough to be used on your YouTube channel. I've been to the museum many times. It's a great place. If you get a chance to go, go. Uh, every time I'm, I'm in Los Angeles, I try and go because there's always new items there. And if you get a chance to go to the vault tour, take the tour. Thank you folks at Peterson Museum.